Candid Conversations with Candidates, brought to you by Crow Wing Power in partnership with Lakes Media Collaborative and the Brainerd Lakes Chamber. I'm Lisa Paxton, and it's my pleasure to welcome Don Niles. Don is joining us as a candidate for State House District 9A. Don, welcome. Thank you very much, Lisa. Why don't you go ahead with your opening comments? Hi, I'm Don Niles. I'm finishing up a four-year term on the Wadena City Council. I'm running for the legislature because I want to accomplish three things. The first thing is adequate funding for public education. We've borrowed too much money from our public schools, approximately $2 billion, to pretend to have balanced the budget. And I'd like to see that corrected and make sure that a decent public education is here. My second main issue is balancing tax revenues as between sales, income, and property taxes. Property taxes over the last 10 years have taken an increasing percentage of the tax revenues of this state, causing quite a detrimental impact, especially in rural areas, and that needs to be rebalanced so that we can have a fair taxation as well as a shock absorber effect as between those. And then the third reason is to have people who can work with each other. As chair of the Wadena 2.0 committee following the June 2010 tornado that destroyed much of our city, I learned that people can work together even, even if they have differing points of view, and I'm looking forward to doing that in the legislature. I live in Wadena with my wife, Lonnie, who's a teacher and media specialist in the school system. I have five children, three by a previous marriage and two sons presently. I live and work full time in Wadena and enjoy it there quite immensely. Great. Thank you for joining us. We're going to roll into our questions. And the first one is, give us three things that distinguish you from the other candidates. I have a proven track record of leadership and community service. That includes the Wadena 2.0 Committee, the Wadena City Council, Kitchigami Regional Board, uh, participation in school activities. Secondly, uh, I look to work with other people cooperatively, to work with them, uh, to have joint solutions and to compromise. My opponent attends Tea Party rallies and is continuing to advocate the policies of division and gridlock that we've seen for the last two years. Lastly, my opponent uh, is a private jet pilot who lives on Gull Lake. He and his fiance live on Gull Lake in Lake Minnetonka. Uh, I live and work in the heart of District 9A, and if elected, will represent the constituents of District 9A. What strategies will you propose to help grow Minnesota's economy? I'd like to see government work to reduce regulations and to provide different, different incentives to grow the economy. And that would include using fiscal policies that increase demand for goods and services within the state. I think that every tax dollar that is used by the state needs to be reviewed on a return on an investment basis so that we're wisely spending our dollars. Government is a necessity. Government has to provide services, but the dollars that do come in have to be spent wisely, and by doing that, we'll get the most bang for our buck, create the most jobs, and serve the people of Minnesota as best we can. Okay. While we're on the topic of money and growing the economy, what are your recommendations to balance the next state budget? I would look at the different programs and see where cuts can be made and go across the board and look at that to see where we can cut the budget. Also, I am a proponent of Government Dayton's uh, proposal to increase taxes on the top 1%. Uh, living in a small town, you can see that property taxes are a regressive tax, and so when a property tax goes up like it did in the last year or so, there's no income to go along with that. So when our local movie theater has to pay that tax, that's tax out of dollars. On the other hand, when you have a new CEO of Best Buy Company who has a $10 million signing bonus, if they have to pay the same percentage of income tax as everyone else, to me that's a fair way to make up the revenue shortfall and to help us balance the budget. Here in Greater Minnesota, transportation is important to our area. What is your solution to Minnesota's unmet transportation needs? One of my priorities, if elected, being from Wadena, Minnesota, will be to have Highway 10 expanded to four lanes in Wadena 
itself. It currently is one of the only, it is the only two-lane stretch of Highway 10 from the Wisconsin to the North Dakota border, and we experience gridlock there all the time. In terms of other types of transit, I think in terms of both energy policy and transportation policy, if we can look towards greater mass transit, we'll be doing a lot better for our constituents in terms of lowering the cost of transportation and having less environmental impacts. Okay. Let's talk about education. What do you think is the state's role in workforce development? The state's role in workforce development stems from the constitutional demand that every child receive an, an education in Minnesota. Education is important to providing people the skills necessary to survive and to participate in a democracy. A quality education provides independence, flexibility, creativity, jobs, better paying jobs, and so I, the, the state has an obligation to make sure that that takes place. I'd like to see greater emphasis on pre-K so that kids are prepared for school. I'd like to see that all kids, once they're in school, receive a quality education. And I'd like to make sure that our higher education institutions remain funded so that they remain uh, very high on the national rankings. Okay, we're going to jump to health care. And Minnesota's health care spending is expected to double in the next 10 years. How would you address the rising cost of health care? There's no question that health care is broken. In my practice as a lawyer, I've worked with different health care companies over time and experienced as well firsthand the fact that the health care system is broken with the current insurer situation. I'm hoping that the Affordable Health Care Act will bring benefits to people and to reduce the health care costs that people already seen. I've experienced firsthand my youngest daughter who graduated from college and had to take out an insurance policy. Uh, and then once the Affordable Health Care Act came in, kids graduating from college will be able to experience health care without having to go out and get a separate policy. Uh, a lot of the costs are incurred in the last portion of life, and we need to look at how those dollars are being spent. And again, a return on investment, so to speak, or at least making sure that they're spent wisely and that costs are, are reduced, if at all possible. Okay. That concludes our questions. Anything else you want to add or topics we didn't cover, Don? I'm looking forward to representing the people of District 9A. I firmly believe in rolling up my sleeves and in hard work and in compromise and that a compromise solution is better than no solution. It's time to get people in St. Paul who are willing to work with each other and realize that we're all in this together for the betterment of our state. Thank you. Thank you, Don, and thank you for joining us for Candid Conversations with Candidates. Visit us at VoteBrainerdLakes.com and vote November 6th.